أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله in this chapter as we discussed previously that there are different lenses to look into the life and the character of Imam Hassan عليه أفضل الصلاة والسلام we looked at the first lens with a Quranic lens to showcase to us the understanding of the Imam's character through the Quran, his different levels that he's attained through the Holy Quran and the different merits that are there for him. Now we want to delve into his life in a practical sense and see how he has reacted and acted in different scenarios that we may learn from different angles of his character to showcase to us and inshallah to learn from within his life a glimpse of that which we don't know because as we stated Imam al Hassan is the oppressed of the two brothers in his remembrance because we'll find ourselves always remembering Imam al Hussein alayhi afdhalu salati was salam and there is a significance without a shadow of doubt and it is importance to teach ourselves as much as we can the remembrance of Imam al Hussein. So inshallah, in the lens for tonight, we're going to look at different stories from different angles of the character of Imam al Hassan alayhi afdhal salati was salam. Now as we begin to understand, he is the oppressed of the two brothers. We remember Imam al Hussein, alayhi afdhal salati was salam, especially during the month of Muharram in abundance. And there's a significance and an importance that we remember him in ourselves and teach the next generation about what occurred in the tragedy of Karbala and the stance that Imam al Hussein took against the oppressors and what he stood for and what he was martyred for. But as much as significance as we put in learning what occurred to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, there should also be a significance to learn from the life of his older brother, Imam al Hassan alayhi afdhal salati was salam. It's something that's quite important and something that we don't really pay attention to. Occurred on the 10th of Muharram whereby Imam al Hussein, after all the men were martyred on the plains of Karbala, he brings forth the woman within the tent. And he says to them a speech. Amongst that, he says these words. He says, Oh my family, لَقَدْ مَاتَ جَدِّي وَقَدْ كَانَ خَيْرٌ مِنِّي وَقَدْ مَاتَ أَبِي وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ مِنِّي وَقَدْ مَاتَ أَخِي وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ مِنِّي so Imam al Hussein alayhi afdhal salati wa salam on the last day brings forth his family and he says to them these following words. He says, My grandfather Rasulullah has passed and he was greater than I. My father Amir al Mu'mineen has passed and he was greater than I. Then he says, And my brother al Hassan has passed and he was greater than I. Who says this? Imam al Hussein in Karbala. And that's something that we need to really focus on. That Imam al Hussein himself says, not just in this occasion, on many occasions, that my brother al Hassan was greater than me. And that's something we really need to look into and delve into. So, as much as we learn and understand about the life of Imam al Hussein, imagine who Imam al Hassan was and how much. Do we actually know about him from the pool of that which we need to learn from, from the life and the character of Imam al Hassan alayhi of salati was salam? When we want to look into his life, there are many different angles that we can look into of his character. Amongst them, people come forth and say that Imam al Hassan didn't have bravery like Imam al Hussein. On the contrary, when we look at Imam al-Hassan's life and see what he did 
alongside Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib in the three civil wars, in Jamal, in Safin, in Nahrawan, we'll find that he was one of the flag bearers in a tradition that we have that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib in one instance gives the flag towards one of his sons by the name of Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, And he gives it to his son and says, can you go and break the ranks? Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya goes out and the tradition says that the arrows in the midst of the day blocked out the sun. So Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya sees this. And then he returns back towards the tent of Amir al Mu'mineen. He says, Oh, my father Ali, I can't go out in the battlefield and break the ranks because in my heart I feel fear. In which Amir al Mu'mineen takes that flag and gives it towards Al Hassan. And he gives it towards Imam Al Hassan, and Imam Al Hassan again, as he leaves the tents, the tradition says, that the arrows of the army of Muawiyah blocked the sun in the middle of the day. But Imam al Hassan never hesitated for one second, nor did he look back. The tradition says that he broke the ranks and he reached that which Amir al Mu'min wanted him to reach. And in that instance, he says to the people around him, towards Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, the tradition that says, Fika arqun or irqun min ummik, meaning, that, yes, you are my son, but your mother is not Fatima to Zahra. That the mother of Al Hassan and Hussein is Fatima to Zahra. And that fear within you is not from me, Ali. Rather, it may be from your mother's side. Whereas Al Hassan does not have that fear within him because he is the son of Amir al Mu'mineen and Fatima to Zahra. So there can be no doubt of the bravery of Imam al-Hassan alayhi afdal salati was salam. Lest a person comes and says that Imam al-Hassan could not fight in Karbala. Rest assured that what he has achieved within these three civil wars is enough to showcase the bravery and the ferocity of the character of Imam al-Hassan on the battlefield. Now bravery, we understand, is part and parcel of his characteristics. What about morality? The morality of Imam al Hassan far exceeds our understanding. That when we look into the life of Imam al Hassan, we cannot comprehend a person acting in the manner in which Imam al Hassan acts. As an example, a famous tradition states that a person that's coming from Sham, as we know, the political climate after Amir al Mu'mineen is martyred that the Khalifa of the time that was taken from Imam al Hassan was Muawiyah. Now this seat of power in Sham, Muawiyah did his utmost in order for him to remove and destroy the image of the family of Rasulullah. And indeed Amir al Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib and his sons. And that's how he could wage wars against them in the manner that he waged. So much so that we understand that Muawiyah would be responsible for the cursing of Amir al Mu'mineen 70 years after the death of Ali ibn Abi Talib. That the people of Sham were brainwashed to such a level that when Amir al Mu'mineen was struck within Salat, the people of Sham would ask, How did Ali die? And when they heard that he was struck within Salat, the reply of the people was saying, did Amir al-Mu'mineen, did Ali ibn Abi Talib pray? So that's the image that Muawiyah painted in the minds of the people that followed him within Sham. So you can imagine a person that's brainwashed in that manner coming towards Medina and searching for the son of whom they called Abu Turab, the son of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And once he finds Imam al Hassan, he comes up to him, and the tradition says that he began to curse him. Imam al Hassan began to curse his father, Amir al Mu'mineen, repetitively. And you'll find this person was by himself. Imam al Hassan had many of his companions around him. Upon hearing these insults from this person that came from Sham, each of them would find their hands on their swords to be unsheathed. 
But upon Imam al Hassan's request, he says, do not do anything to harm this man. Look at a person that just, his father's just been cursed. He's just been cursed. Repetitively, Imam al Hassan, look at the morality that we learn from this great man. The tradition states that Imam al Hassan looked at this person and says the following. He says, oh man, you seem like a stranger. You're not from these lands. If you need a place to stay, then my house is there for you. If you need food, we will give you food. If you are thirsty, we will quench your thirst. If you are in need of debts to be paid, we will pay them for you. Upon hearing this, this person from Sham is at a level where he finds himself very embarrassed of what just occurred and what he's just stated from his mouth. In which the tradition goes on to say that he all of a sudden changes his attitude towards Imam al Hassan. And he says to Imam al Hassan, Oh Hassan ibn Ali, Allah is more knowledgeable to where? That Allah is more knowledgeable to where he places his message. Imam al Hassan looks towards his companions and says, Is this better what I have done or what you guys were going to do by harming him? That's the morality of Imam al Hassan. And likewise, we know at a young age as well, not just at his older age, whereby we have the tradition of the old man in the area where they were performing wudu, in which they saw the elderly man performing wudu incorrectly. The morality of Imam al Hassan and Hussein at such a young age, they didn't go to the elderly man and say, Oh, elderly man, you've been doing your wudu wrong for so many years. No. The way that they did it was so eloquent that they began to come together at a young age and tell the old elderly man. They say, oh man, can you please check our wudu to see if we are performing the wudu in a correct manner. So you'll find Imam Hassan and Hussein will both perform wudu exactly the same in front of the elderly man. The elderly man, upon seeing the process in which Imam al Hassan and Hussein were performing their wudu realized that they were actually trying to teach him that he was mistaken in the way that he was performing it. And that's exactly what he told them. He says, Thank you for teaching me in a way that was very pleasant to me. And that's the beauty of the Ahlul Bayt, the beauty of the morality of Imam al Hassan. You'll find in generosity, Imam al Hassan was known in his generosity. And there's so many traditions in the manner in which he would go about giving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As an example, it's stated that one day one of his servants, that was a female, would come towards Imam al Hassan, would greet him by saying, Assalamu alayka, ya ibn Rasulullah wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and place a rayhana, which is what we look at to be a basil, in the hands of Imam al Hassan. And Imam al-Hassan would look towards this servant and says to her that you are free for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people would look towards Imam al-Hassan and says, you've just freed a servant. And he would say, we have been taught that if a person greets you, you greet them with the same greeting or greet them with better. She's greeted me in such a manner. What is greater than to free her as a servant and make her a free woman? Imagine that that was just one of the different aspects of Imam al Hassan's life in his generosity. And I will begin to understand that there are different characteristics that we need to learn and delve into. That this short chapter cannot suffice to learn about all the characteristics, the morality, the knowledge, the wisdom of Imam al Hassan. Salam. And in his worship, it was a different aspect altogether. Where narrated to us that 25 years he would go towards Hajj barefoot. Many a time people would try to make him go with them or give them some form of transport, whether it be a horse or a mule or a camel. And the Imam would refuse saying that I want to walk barefoot towards the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many a times he, was, he would be found reciting the Holy Quran and whenever he'd come towards a verse that is mentioning the believers, he would say, here I am, O oh Allah, here I am. 
So you'll find this great, great character that we have within history that we know very little of, that's been oppressed. Our duty amongst many within this holy month of Ramadan is try our utmost to learn from the life of Imam al-Hasan, to learn more about his life, more stories, more traditions, more ethics, and not only learn them for the sake of learning, rather take from what he teaches us, take from what he has done in order for us to better ourselves, to apply it within our lives, insha'Allah. So that's our duty for each and every individual that calls himself the lover and the follower of Ahlul Bayt to seek within this holy month of Ramadan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.